Hi, I'm Alyssa Goodman. I'm a holistic nutritionist, a cleanse expert. I see private clients in Los Angeles, and I am here interviewing one of my favorite people in the entire world that I met four years ago when I was getting into the business myself. Her name is Jess Seppel. She's actually from Australia. She is a lot younger than me, but you would never know it because she is just really smart and way beyond her years in every aspect. And we have been connected ever since all these four years. She has written two amazing books about the healthy life. And I'm going to talk to her about her passion of how she got into the business mm -hmm. and what really drives her now in seeing private clients. She has an eight week program also online that is absolutely fabulous that you have to download. So Jess. Hi, <laughs> so good to be here in this beautiful space. I love With having you. you here. I mean, every time I see your number come up on my phone, I, I have to connect. say like I, Big, huge smile oh, comes on my face. I love, so much love for you. you so much respect for you. Your spirituality, your heart, same. The feeling same. is mutual. You like? So tell me a little bit about yourself yeah. in terms of how did you get into the whole wellness space? Yeah, so I was really fortunate to have been brought up in a really healthy household. My mom has always been the healthiest cook. I had a grandmother who was meditating and drinking lemon water and eating papaya way before that was trendy. Wow. She would take us to health farms as young young children. Like for one of my for my 13th birthday, she took me, my grandmother took me to a health farm. Um, so you can imagine how I, we never had white bread in the house, which at that time was quite strange and rare compared to what my friends had. Right. But there was also certainly balance in the household. If we went to birthday parties, we were allowed anything we wanted. We really were taught how to indulge moderately. But when we came home, we always came home to a wholesome, healthy meal. So I was very fortunate because that's very unique. Um, but at the age right. of 13, we immigrated from South Africa to Australia. And it was a really challenging time for me mostly because my body shape was changing from puberty. And as well as immigrating, I was coming to a new country, having to make new friends. And here I was really struggling with this changing body shape. And as a result, mm -hmm. I actually discovered dieting. And suddenly, uh -oh. yeah, suddenly everything started to go downhill. My relationship with food, my relationship with my body really developed, I would say, disordered relationship with food, disordered eating really low self-esteem and suddenly numbers were determining my self-worth calorie counting carbohydrate counting the number on the scale would really start to determine my self-worth and who i was i was relying on that number so becoming obsessed i was obsessed i was restrictive with food if you become a fad dieter you slowly cut out each food group and then the food groups become really fearful. I was so afraid of food. I was so afraid of carbohydrates. You know, I was sitting down to every meal feeling stressed, anxious, guilty, the guilt that I used to feel around wow. food. And really this yeah. went on for years and years and years, really from the age of 13, big time till 23. Wow. So 10, 10 years of solid fat dieting. And then after school, I went up to study health and nutrition. I did a bachelor of health and then uh, three years of that and then two years of nutritional medicine. And when I started learning about the body and how powerful food is and how food and nutrients affect our body systems, and I was remember sitting in my lectures freaking out. I actually had panic attacks because I was seeing that all the things that how how badly I was treating my body. You know, as a fad diet, I was living off Diet Coke, cans of tuna, black coffee, had cut out all the major food groups that are so important for each body system. And I had developed this terrible relationship with myself. And so I was in these lectures learning about all the, the importance of your macronutrients and all the, all the things that you need to survive and thrive. And I, I was doing the exact opposite. And so slowly and surely I would go home and make small changes. I was basically slowly transitioning from being this fad dieter to becoming more and more of a whole food eater and feeling a little bit better and better every day. And it wasn't just about food. You know, I was taking care of my stress levels. I was starting to repair my gut. I was starting to really slow down my nervous system. I started, you know, when you're a fad dieter, often you're an over-exerciser. Mm -hmm. I started to really take control of that. So I started to pull back and try, starting to treat my body with more kindness and patience. And I started blogging about this transition. In my fourth year of study, I started blogging about the pain of being this fad diet and how afraid I was of foods, but then how I was now discovering foods, whole foods and easy recipes that were making me feel well. Suddenly I wasn't on a diet. 
and I was feeling good. And suddenly, and I was in major therapy at the time, which is important to say, it wasn't just about my food journey and transition. I was in therapy. It was about your mind. I was trying to understand yeah. where had I gone wrong? Where did my relationship with myself suddenly evaporate? It, it, I had no relationship with myself. I had no respect for myself. My self-worth and self-esteem was so, so low. Where did that go wrong? And yes, I had a really toxic relationship when I was a young, a young girl. So that definitely worsened things. I immigrated. So I had all these life events happening and I'd lost myself. And food often becomes this way to control the pain. Right. I was going through a lot of pain and food was my way to say, okay, that's my one thing I can control in my life because I didn't feel like I could control anything else. And so, yeah, and so the fourth year of study, I started blogging about this transition. I'm, I think I'm just incredibly honest. I'm willing to be honest about my pain and my struggles. Beautiful. And I don't think, and I'm still, I still struggle. And I think the community appreciate that. I was just I'm on the journey that. with them. Yeah, you still struggle. Not as much. I have to course. say, I'm so, I, I am so proud of myself mm -hmm. because even now, I often my, my community know, like when I'm traveling, like some of the old stuff can come up, like anxiety around food, guilt. Oh, I shouldn't right. have had that last night. What are you doing? Right. Oh, you haven't had time to exercise. Like I'm not in my routine. When I'm not in my structured, controlled routine, I, the anxiety can creep up again. But I'm so proud of myself because I have the tools in my box to deal with those emotions. So yes, they come up. They last a few moments, but then I know how to tackle them. And that's really what the eight week program is all about. Like just the tools, just the techniques. Say, what are the tools? The tools that you need. I mean, there's are there so, a lot of tools. There are, like, there are a lot so. of tools and it's a journey. Like the thing about the living the healthy life, as you know, it's, it's a journey when no one's mm -hmm. saying, all right, you read my books, do my program. Right. You're, you're, that's it. You'll be fine. This is, this is, a, you know, so much like this yeah. is a journey every, it's about making small changes that the body really responds to. So right. I'm trying to create a philosophy that is doable, same as yours. Let's just create something that's achievable. And living the healthy life does not mean living a perfect life. Right. No. Okay. So that's, we, that is a very we, good point. We, 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 we you're going to, you you're going to fail. Perfection? Yeah. It's exact. Well, that, and we spoke about this last night that right. if I could tell my younger self, it, just be kinder to yourself. I mean, people on my eight week program are expecting to do it even on the program. I don't even expect you to do it all perfectly. You know, it's but they do. do you just they do what you can like do. They have to do it perfectly? No, do and I'm there saying that? to them, no, yeah. you don't need to do it all. Right. Because living that, we, we, I'm a nutritionist and we all, I don't do it perfectly. Mm -hmm. You're, you know, we, we still struggle, but it's, as I was saying, it's just having those tools in your box to deal with those emotions or those thoughts or those negative feelings around food. If you do eat badly or make a bad food choice, okay, that's okay. Like, it's time to forgive yourself. Here's the next step you know, coming back to your body, reconnecting with your body and how are you going to reconnect? Yes, yoga. Yes, mindfulness. Rest, just being re more, re adding more rest to your day allows you to be more mindful. So then once you have that re-established re a relationship with yourself and your body, then you, you're much more able to make those healthy choices. Do you know? Right. You c I don't feel right. as a nutritionist, I can say to people, right, this is what you need to change. Change this, eat this, don't eat that until they have that good relationship with themselves. So that's the biggest point, really, yeah, I think is to so. really get, go back to yourself and figure out who you are and be strong within your Build own. and building some sort of foundation of love again. And it sounds, it's, it's so hard, loving it's a, yourself. Yeah. And I think we just don't realize how much, how much we have all fallen out of love with ourselves, especially as women. So you get all these emails from the eight week program people and many more because you have a huge following That's the on only... social media. So how do you, how do I find them? Yeah. I mean, I know, how do you respond to them yeah. in terms of, I mean, or, you know, this self love part, mm. I'm sure you're seeing a lot of people writing to you about how much they don't have the self love. Yeah. I just, well, you, what just came to my mind was when you said like all the emails that I get every day and the messages, it's like, just makes what I know now is just how much women need support. Mm -hmm. We need to support each other. And I think that's all I'm trying to create is a support network Yeah. to say, because the problem is we place so much pressure on ourselves as women to do it all perfectly, to eat perfectly, to be perfect moms, sisters, wives, friends. I just want to create this safe space where, where we can all just come together and be honest and say, it's not perfect. I'm not going to be able to be the perfect mom, wife, sister, friend, and that's okay. That's okay. And let's now start focusing on what we are doing. We're right. doing enough. What do you see as the biggest problem with these young, you know, yeah. 15, 25 mm. year olds, like that whole age group? That's What's... my favorite age group because 
this is when I felt like I had no one to hold my hand through some really painful, challenging times. I remember like, because I there was no social media at the time, so how I discovered fad dieting was through magazines. Mm -hmm. And I was just copying what those those crazy models were models were doing, <laughs> literally. Yeah. And I remember thinking, oh my God, like I've now caught I'm now caught up in this toxic cycle of fad dieting. I remember like there was I remember there being no one, like no nutritionist or no person who I felt like I could look up to to know the right answer. And there is no right answer. So I'm here saying as a nutritionist, it's time to reconnect to your body, to your unique body and figure out what works for you as a biochemically unique individual. And so what's happened as a result of this fad diet culture, for especially for our young girls, is that we're more disconnected from our bodies than ever. So I want these young girls to start to connect to themselves and figure out what works for them. Because right now they're copying their friends, their sisters, their social media feeds. And, and I don't blame them. Right. It's tempting. It's trendy. Mm -hmm. Being on these diets is trendy. I get it. And being skinny. Being skinny is trendy. Skinny. Right. So we need to start creating new ideas of what beautiful is. So it's so fabulous to deal with the emotional component because I yeah. know that I didn't have that either growing mm -hmm. up until later in life and yeah. until I realized all of that and got calmer and more comfortable in my skin. Mm -hmm. I'm a lot older. Yeah. So I wish I had known that. I don't I think you are. I think you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> to tell me that, to train me that, to train me to just get back into my center. But what are the things food wise mm. that you see with these young girls? Yeah. Like what are they going for? that is just really sending them down a slippery slope. Yeah. Well, I think the first thing is that they mindless eaters as well. Mm -hmm. So there's the people that are restrictive and obsessive with food. Right. Yes. But then there's the people who are mindless. They just not connected to food or how it makes them feel. So the number one thing is we need to, I don't even like the, word, the term mindful eating anymore. It's like overused. Like right. just being conscious and present with your meal time. The problem is we're full of distractions right now. There's so much going on in this world. Social media, like most teenagers are sitting down scrolling on their social media feeds and wondering why they're overeating on junk later on in the day because they're not even feeling satisfied after each meal because they're on their social media feeds. I mm -hmm. ate breakfast the other day and broke my rule. I never have my phone around me when I'm eating. And I broke that and I was scrolling on social media and eating my breakfast and I swear 10 to 15 minutes later, I did not remember eating my breakfast. I was unsatisfied. Was I was like scratching for more food. I was like going into my fridge. I was like, oh, I'm kind of hungry or something. Right. right. And so our teenagers are probably overeating. Mm -hmm. Overeating because they mind, there's mindless eating happening. So I think young teenage girls are not realizing the impact that food has on different body systems. It's not just about your waistline. Right. It's like, do you realize that these greens contain nutrients that help your menstrual cycle to take place? Right. Like they're not connected to what food does to the body. Or their skin, right? Their skin is not good. So Their mood. Yeah, their mood. Their yeah. mood. Yeah. Like, do you know that when you refine sugar and... I was just going to ask you about sugar. Well, ref yeah. So we know, of course, yeah. this is a big problem with our teenage girls mm -hmm. and an addiction to junk food. I think if we educated what I found in my practice when I was practicing as a nutritionist, when I used to say, do you know that that will affect that or the consequence of that? So the consequence of over-exercising is that you're probably going to lose your period. So when I told them the consequence, mm -hmm. they would start to change. Mm -hmm. So do you know that refined sugar affects the bacteria in your gut? Do you know that refined sugar will make you feel low, ha, will make, make you more likely to experience low moods or depression? Do you know that refined sugar will affect your sleep? And when you don't get a good night's sleep, this will happen. So educating them on how the, the, the bad foods affect their bodies. I think that's when they'll start to be more mindful about their choices. Right. I love it's not that. fair to say to your teenage, don't, don't eat junk. Don't eat that. Yeah. It's not fair mm -hmm. because you're not, they're not going to do, they're not going to no. change. I but do that with my girls and they I want feel like more. you would. But right? exactly. Oh, we know this right. is a big thing. This mm -hmm. is a really big thing. Restriction and deprivation always leads to a complex relationship with food, right. overeating, binge eating and emotional eating right are there we talked about this last night supplements like yeah. for these for this young group i mean i know the older generation is taking tons of supplements yeah. and over supplementing yeah. like we heard last night but what about for the younger generation mm. are there certain supplements that you know so, potentially yeah. they should do well in my eight week program i like give three things that will just cover all bases so they start the program with magnesium mm. a probiotic and a multi-mineral okay just to cover because people yeah. just genuine and and probably a B complex. 
because people just genu genuinely and generally feel better with those three things. Magnesium really, really just helps with sleep. It really helps to calm down the nervous system, really helps with bowel movements. Um, probiotics. <laughs> That's important. The research that is coming out around probiotics is, a stunt, is crazy right now. I mean, there's research coming out that the different strains of bacteria impact our thyroid function, metabolism, fat burning. Like the research, I mean, research is now showing that different strains of bacteria can help to reduce mood or mood and depression low mood and depression so are there certain strains or certain amount just, of beneficial yeah bacteria? so we want as we want quite a, a lot a variety what would you just say 12 strains yeah do you like uh-huh i i like i mean in australia we have really good probiotics so okay. I, I i like it just to be a really good brand number okay. one where right. they've actually done their research and they know the different strains are really they well research strains more mm -hmm. than anything but i think it's very important to say they need to be guided people need to be guided by a health practitioner so for 2017, yeah, um, I want to know what your intentions are and what you're manifesting. I yeah. do know that you're you're in LA, spending more time here. Yes, so um, my and I'm excited about that. <laughs> well, I just want to have you over for dinner a million times. I just feel I want to be I want to be open to creating support groups for young girls in LA. I wow. want to create more support for the women here. That that's my beautiful. that's my intention manifestation. Honestly, that is it. I want women. I want to create a space where women feel supported by me, by my brand, by my books. That's right. what I and special. Yeah, that's wow. that's my intention. Well, wow. what's yours? I think you're gonna do what's yours? all of that. <laughs> Tell me what yours is. Mine is for, um, to do more of these. I love mm -hmm. being able to interview. You're very good at this. Interviewing. Healers, um, yeah, people who are combining like you the body mind and soul mm -hmm. it's not just about the health and the food and yeah. like we talked about but it's about the whole package yeah. so i my intention is to do to interview more people that mm. i can bring that out into the you. world that inspire me like you and you spreading really them this message spreading this message about you know flexibility in your lifestyle and that it isn't about restriction or you know deprivation because i just think there's another way right there's right. a better way there's a better way and there's so many health issues out there because of all these things that we've been talking about you need to have a tv show where we can where, we, where you can go <laughs> Maybe through that's what i need to manifest that's what you need to manifest because where you can actually when there is a health issue yeah what are some of the things you can do right that will help people actually change in that moment. Right. I don't think there is anything like that. From Not a nutritionist. Not, yes. So that would be so, a good manifestation for you. So how can people find you? Right. So my website is jessicaseppel.com. The eight week program is on the website. My books are only on Amazon from the US right now. Okay. But in Australia and the UK and South Africa, okay. you can buy a hard copy. But Jessica, oh, JS Health on Instagram. Right, that's Jay's a huge health on Instagram. one. <laughs> and it's the stories. Jay's health on Instagram. I love Instagram. the stories because you do such a good job at the videos about how to cook things. Yeah, the simple things. lots of showing you how to cook healthy food healthy in a very food. simple, 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 right. non fuss way. Right, yeah, Jay's health and jessicaseppel.com. Well, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for having me. And I adore thank you for you. being in my life. Oh, thank I'm I love how, you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> thank you for having me. Thank you.